just the season we've been through, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Now we're going to go to John. It's important this morning to understand that the Holy Spirit guided each and every word that was written by these four people who wrote the gospel. Uh, and they're different. They have a main, they're trying to get a different point across, Brother James, if they would. You know, Matthew pre presents Jesus as the Messiah, the Christ, the coming king. And that's what his, his focus was. And we find that Mark presents uh, Jesus as the suffering servant. Mm -hmm. Prophesied like in Isaiah, Jesus humbled himself and come to the will of his father to reveal an amazing love and amazing grace of God. Luke presents Jesus as the son of man. Sure. He, the title from the prophecy of Daniel, the son of David, Luke focuses on Jesus' humility and details of the announcements and the incarnation of his birth. You know, John, the Gospel of John, focuses on God's love. But John sets and uh, presents Jesus as the Son of God, yes. the second incarnate in the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And John comes and put, puts a cross, wants to get a cross. He is God. Jesus is the Son of God. He is God. <coughs> and that's what John's principle was this morning. This morning our lesson comes from the first chapter of the book of John. One of the most, we say this all the time, but this truly is one of the most familiar scriptures in in the Bible, in our church. Many and many of you could quote it without even reading it. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. It's quoted, you could quote it on your own. But I just want to take just a few moments this morning. I could this morning. It's, it's amazing to me as you read these scriptures. I, I can't tell you, and I'm not bragging, but I couldn't tell you the times I've wrote, writ, uh, I have read <coughs> this passage, passage of scripture. Yes. Just Hundreds of times. Yeah. Not bragging, but just reading it. And every single time yeah. that you read it, you get something different. The Holy Spirit revealed to me something different. And if time would permit, I could teach this, as Brother Lonnie Gore would say, I could teach this this morning very enthusiastic. Yeah. Whereas my brother Tony gets on me all the time, I could do some good lay speaking here this morning. But I've just got a little thought this morning that I want to get across. Share it with us. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I want to read three verses of this. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning was God, and all things that were made by him, and all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. And I'll end with the last verse in our lesson, verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten Father, full of grace and full of truth. And I want to talk to you this morning for just a minute about God's Word. You know, when I was growing up, and I, and I don't know, it could be the same, but I haven't heard it for a while. When I was growing up, you know, my dad and my grandpa and all those folks, uh, Josh used to say, a man's word is his bond. If you give somebody your word, you better live up to it. And that's why I try. I tried to live my life that way. If I give you my word, I'm going to do something. I try everything in my power to do it. <laughs> I would like to stand here this morning and say every single time that I gave my word that I was going to do something, Brother Tony, that I did. But there was times that things out of my circumstance prevented me to fulfill what I said. See, but God, this morning, has given you his word. And his word shall not fail. Just by the, 
think about it. Just by God's word in the beginning. If you go to the very first chapter of this Bible, Genesis 1, God created this earth, you'll find many and many times that the word, the verse starts with, and God said. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And it goes on and said, and God said, let there be the oceans and the water, and it was all done. God said, let there be a firmament between heaven, the earth, and the sky. And just by the voice, just by his word, Bob, you look up and you see every star, every planet. Every, this whole universe was just because God's word said. And it goes on and says, and God said, We'll divide the seas from and make dry land. And just by God saying it, his word, the oceans departed and we have dry land. And by his word, he said, let there be mountains and all this. And God's voice draws the mountains, the highest mountains in this world. God's voice draws the mountains. So when God gives you his word, you can count on it. It will never fail. No. God said he gave promises. He gave 8,810 10 promises in this book that we call the Bible. Right. And never one, he's never failed on none of them. Not one. He got, he gave you his word. You know, he made Abraham a promise. And he said because there was no other, nothing greater to swear by, yeah. there's nothing even compared to this world's act. He said because there's nothing greater, he swore by himself, his word. He wrote Abraham, he said you can count the sands of the sea, if you can count the stars, that's how your seed is going to be. And every single day, and every time somebody gets saved, gives their heart to Jesus, there's another grain of sand, another star. God's word is being fulfilled. God gave, his, gave Abraham his word, and he swore to it. There's lots of things in this Bible says about God's word. When God says, makes a promise, he gives you his word. We know that when Noah come out of the ark, we've talked and we've taught about that before. God made Noah a promise. He said, when I, put, when I bring a cloud over the sky, there'll be a rainbow. That was over 4,000 years ago, God giving Noah his word. He gives mankind his word and every single one of you in there sing a rainbow because God's word will never fail. Jeremiah said <coughs> that God watches over his word and makes sure that it is fulfilled, perfect, uh, performed. Isaiah said God's word will stand forever. Never pass. Always be. God give you his word. Jesus said in Matthew, his word would never pass away. It would stand forever and ever. Hebrew writer said that God's word is faithful and true. Faithful means that he makes sure it's going to happen. True. 2 Samuel wrote that God's word would be has been tested and proven. Mm -hmm. It's been tried and God proved it. Jeremiah said his word is like <coughs> is like a fire and it's like a ham, hammer that breaketh the rock. <coughs> Nothing can stop it, Richard. God says it, 
says it's going to be. Nothing gets in its path. It's going to be God. So this morning, what I want to get across is God give you his word. He said, for whosoever will call on the name shall be saved. God give you his word. You don't have to go to that awful place called hell. You can go to heaven. You can live with God for eternal. God give you his word. You can have it. God said, whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can count on it. God give you his word. It would happen. There's many of my friends that's going through tough times but like what I got to say to you this morning. Just hold on. Amen. Better days are coming. God give you his word. God said, in this world you shall have, you shall. He didn't say you might. He said, it, he didn't say maybe. He said, you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Hold on a little longer. Better days are coming. God give you his word. This morning, if you're watching by live stream or you're sitting in this building, as I look around, everybody in this building is saved as far as I know. If you're watching this this morning, or you watch this whenever you watch it, get time to watch it. You can go to heaven this morning. One of the in the last book of this Bible, Jesus Christ told John, the Revelator, he said, "Write these words. I want you to write them down because they're true and they're faithful." God giving you His word. I don't know your situation. I don't know what you're going through, but I know one thing right now. God promised a better time and a better way. God promised you if you would just call on his name, he would save you this morning because God gives you his word. Bless your heart around here.